guys, Alexander Nava here. Today I'm gonna to be going over my thoughts on the new MacBook Pro 16 inch. And I did do an unboxing of that video. If you wanna see that, I'm gonna link a card up above. Uh, but I'm gonna let you know my thoughts after using it for almost a month now. Before we get into it, I do want to give a shout out. Uh, I always give a shout out at the beginning of these videos. The last person who left a comment, the winner is Zane Woodson. So Zane pointed out to us that the packaging on the MacBook Pro 16 inch, uh, he said that Apple was trying to go more eco-friendly. So I appreciate that because I definitely was wondering what was happening. If you guys are new, please subscribe. We just passed 200 subscribers and I'm so excited to have a little community going. It means a lot. The next shout out that we do for the next video is gonna get a $5 Amazon gift card. If you wanna enter to win a shout out, please go ahead and leave a comment down below. Again, next video, you may be the winner. I choose them based off of a random number generator, so if you're lucky, you could win. Let's start with my thoughts on the new MacBook. So let's start with the good. So I love the form factor. It's still the same size as my previous MacBook, which is a 20, mid-2014 MacBook. Um, I also like the battery. The battery has been lasting me pretty much all day when I'm not power using. So when I'm not video editing and I'm just surfing or doing some light editing, uh, the battery, I've had no complaints with it. It lasts a long time. Um, and it's in a much improved over the last MacBook that I had at least. The other thing that came to my surprise that I actually use a ton is the touch bar. So um, I didn't know that the only way you can switch volumes was through the touch bar. I never really thought of it because I never had a touch bar. Uh, but because of that, I actually love the sliding feature. You know, so instead on my previous MacBook where I had to spam the volume up or volume down button, um, if I want to get that adjustment. Well, in this one, I press the volume button and I can just slide to where I want it. So that was actually a really nice touch. Again, I'm new to the touch bar. I know some of you guys have had it for a while, but I appreciate that and I do end up using it a lot more than I thought I would. The other thing that I do love, which I, you know, I thought I would love in the unboxing as well, is the trackpad. The trackpad has been amazing. It's so big and I have big hands and it's just been great. I definitely like the big touch bar. Uh, that's a difference between my 2014 MacBook. I would definitely keep that touch bar. The other important thing that we want to talk about too is performance. Now, this thing is a powerhouse. I put in 4K raw video from my Sony's and I edited it on Final Cut Pro. And again, I'm new to Final Cut Pro as well and it just handles it. I don't need to create proxies or anything like that. It plays without skipping, uh, without buffering, even with adding multiple effects, and I've never had an issue. Now, I can't tell you if it's the way that Final Cut handles versus Premiere, uh, but I can tell you that exporting and rendering my video is so fast on this thing. The hardware in here is really no joke. One of the other things that I've actually really loved is the speakers. Now, again, as I said, the 2014 speakers, those have been great. I never had a complaint. They were some of the best speakers that I could have on my laptop. And these just, the bass on the speakers that are built in, you'd think I have an external speaker plugged in, I swear, you turn it up all the way, it gets loud, you hear the bass, you hear it bumping. The music is really nice. I'm telling you, the speakers on this thing are no joke. Now that we've talked about the good, let's talk about some of the bad. So some of the things that I didn't like about this MacBook, the first one is the fan noise. Now, I'm not sure if I'm the only one who has this. I haven't really researched into it, but I can just have Chrome open and maybe, um, you know, a Spotify or something like that. And I will start to hear the fans, not super loud, but you'll hear them going. Now, on my old MacBook, my 2014, you never heard, heard the fans kick in until the computer was actually working hard and it was heating up. Now, this one has the fans going, I feel like, you know, with the lightest of load. Now, I do know that there is improved airflow between the previous model, and I'm not sure if it's because of that, uh, but I feel like the fans are turning on a little bit too quick on this model. Uh, again, without even editing, the fans start uh, making noise. And if you're in a place that's really, really quiet, like, you know, maybe a library or something, or you're trying to capture video uh, and you have a mic nearby like I do now, if the fan was going off, you might be able to pick up some background noise. So I'm not a fan of the fan. The other thing that's a little bit annoying, it doesn't bug me too much, but I know a lot of you people online have been, you know, raging about it to Apple, is there's only USB three ports on, or USB-C ports on the MacBook. So I had to go out and purchase a dongle. 
Now, the dongle that I bought has an Ethernet adapter, it has a VGA, it has an HDMI port, USB 3s, um, a USB 2 port, an HDMI out. Now this one is very versatile because I can go in, you know, to a meeting room, as I said, uh, if I'm doing a presentation for a business, and I can plug in a VGA cable, um, or I can go ahead and plug in an HDMI cable. So if you do pick this up, again, you want to pick up a, a dongle. This one says Pow Lacken on it, Lacken, Pow Lacken. I just picked it up off Amazon. I think I got it for around 50 bucks, uh, but definitely do your research. Get one with um, just the necessary ports that you need if you're trying to go small, or if you want to be versatile, make sure to get one with many outputs on there. Now, another thing I'm not a fan of, and this isn't just necessarily with the MacBook, but I guess Mac OS or Catalina in general is, um, there's a new feature called Sidecar, which you can use your iPad as a secondary display. I think that's a great feature for when you're on the go. I'm gonna be taking a trip in January to um, Florida, and I would love to use my iPad as a second display, but unfortunately, I have an iPad Air 2, um, and it's iPad Air 2, I believe, like the third generation. I have a second gen or something like that. Um, but anything above what I have basically would work as a sidecar, as a screen. The one I don't is just right below the cutoff line. Now I don't know if that's to do with hardware specifications or if that's how just they wanted to write the software and cut off support there. But I am a little bummed that I'm not able to use my iPad. Again, it's nothing to do specifically with the MacBook, but kind of the new update of Catalina as a, in, you know, as a whole. And if you guys know me in real life, you'll know my final complaint and what that is. It's upgradeability and repairability. So um, something still in the back of my head that, you know, me not being able to upgrade the SSD on here or, or repair any of the components because they're soldered into the logic board, it kind of just bugs me. Now, I love having the, the greatest, you know, hardware, the fastest hardware, it's great. But when that repairability aspect is there you know kind of psychs me out being somebody who repairs you know my own phones my own gadgets i love repairing things and unfortunately the repairability on this macbook is not very good i believe i fix it gave it like a one or two on the repairability scale so unfortunately that's definitely a con of this macbook so now that i've had the macbook for about three weeks to a month would i recommend that you buy it and my answer is a little bit conflicted here. If you are not a power user, I would not recommend you buy it. So if you're only using it for things like surfing the web, checking emails, doing light video editing, like, you know, maybe, or light photo editing, like maybe just Lightroom, I would say it's not worth the money for you. If you are a power user who does editing, you have to run programs like Lightroom, Photoshop, Audition, um, all those things, maybe many at a time, this is for you. If you're exporting or rendering any videos or images or 3D renderings, this laptop is for you. Um, or if you are a person who runs any um, high-end programs for DJing like Serato and you're running it with something like uh, sound switch to run lighting, something like that, then you'd want to consider this. This MacBook is amazing in its hardware capabilities. It's really fast. But if you're going to buy this, you want to make sure that you're going to take advantage of the full specs. If you're just buying this to surf the web and maybe play a casual uh, game or two or something like that, I don't think the computer's worth it for you. Um, if you're looking for a gaming computer, um, I'd recommend you probably go Windows, uh, but if you are a power user and you want to go into the Premiere, or if you want to go into the Final Cut setting uh, and you want to try out Final Cut and you want to seriously edit for work, I'd recommend this for you. Overall, I'd give the MacBook a 9 out of 10 rating. Now, the one star that I took off is just for those people that aren't power users. I can't recommend this to you because it is expensive, it is a premium product. Only buy it if you're gonna take advantage of the full hardware that's built in. Um, I can't stress it enough. If you are going to only surf the web, this is not for you, it's too expensive. You can get something that's much cheaper and save a ton of money and you'll get the same exact performance. This um, is for the editing uh, users, the power users, uh, the professionals if you're just gonna surf the web again. I can't stress this enough, I would not recommend you buy this. 
Well, guys, I hope you appreciated my review and thoughts on the new MacBook 16 inch. Um, if you want to see the unboxing video, go ahead and click the card up above. I'll include that. If you're not subscribed again, please be sure to subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Give this video a like if you liked it. And again, if you want to be in the running to get the next shout out and the $5 Amazon gift card, leave a comment down below. You could be the next winner. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below too. And make sure to follow me on Instagram. I'm gonna be posting there in between videos. I hope you guys love the studio as well. I hope to make a lot more videos and we'll see you next time.